According to Snopes.com, there's an urban legend about how Mr. Rogers' car was stolen from outside the studio where he recorded Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. When the thieves realized whose car they'd stolen, they returned it with a note saying they'd never have taken the car if they knew whose it was. Although we're pretty sure this incident never actually happened, I think it illustrates something important about the public's relationship with Fred Rogers and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. They make us want to be better people than we know ourselves to be. We're probably all familiar with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Most of us have spent at least some time wanting to be a resident of that neighborhood. I grew up watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and it provided an oasis of peace for me in a world that was not especially nurturing. Mr. Rogers deserves tribute because, in the words of a popular internet meme whose author is unknown, he was an extremely religious Presbyterian minister, and yet never mentioned anything religious in the most moral, caring TV show of my childhood. Today, I'll first tell you about Mr. Rogers' pro-peace work, and secondly, I'll tell you about how Mr. Rogers provides a good role model for the idea that strength and gentleness are not mutually exclusive. Now that I've introduced you to my points, let's examine his pro-peace work. Mr. Rogers tirelessly worked for peace through his television show and public interactions. According to Hines, Mr. Rogers actually got into television because he hated the violence present in most television for children. Rogers even objected to such silly violence as characters being hit in the face with a pie. And, according to Berenger, Mr. Rogers worked tirely to break down the walls between people, including making a politically unpopular visit to Russia during the Cold War. Now that we've talked about some of Mr. Rogers' pro-peace work, let's talk about how he more generally exemplifies strength while still being intensely caring. Mr. Rogers was one of the only celebrities who embraced both strength and gentleness, and as such serves as a good role model for children. Solomon lauded Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as one of the bright spots on TV. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was an oasis of normalcy and calmness in a television landscape which was too often neither. As shown in episode 1485 of his show, Mr. Rogers never ran from the fact that we as human beings will encounter frustration and anger in our lives, and so he attempted to introduce constructive, nonviolent ways of managing these difficult emotions. According to Grabowski, Mr. Rogers exemplifies both the ideal of gentleness in a supreme caring way of interacting with his television neighbors and strength, fighting ceaselessly for peacemaking. Now that I've described some of the reasons I feel that Fred Rogers is worthy of our admiration and respect, let me wrap up and review. We've talked about how Fred Rogers worked for peace, even in times when it may not have been politically expedient. And we've also spent some time examining how Mr. Rogers worked to show that gentleness and strength don't need to be mutually exclusive. I'd like to leave you with, with what is probably Mr. Rogers' most famous quote. When I was a boy, I would see scary things on the news. My mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Now that Mr. Rogers is gone, it's up to all of us to be the helpers.